Let's do one more word with Yvette Dontremont. She is the science babe, and she joins us on the line from Irvine, California. Yvette, I wanted to uh, read this to you here. Last week, a study was published in the Journal of American Medical Association that looked at the MMR vaccination, measles, mumps, rubella. This is data from mm -hmm. more than 95,000 children in the United States, all of whom had older siblings, and the study concluded the following, that receipt of the MMR vaccine was not associated with increased risk of autism spectrum disorder, regardless of whether older siblings had ASD. The findings indicate no harmful association between MMR vaccine receipt and ASD, even among children already at higher risk for ASD. And I wonder whether you think this study will now put an end to the claims that these vaccinations cause autism. <sighs> It's unfortunately, I don't think it's going to make much of a dent because I've been, I guess I would say I've been arguing with the anti-vaxxers for a little while and it's hard to sway someone's opinion on this subject because they're very set in their ways on it. It's, it's, it's a little bit of an uphill battle with the anti-vaxxers. You crashed an anti-vaxxer party once. You told us about it on your blog. Why'd you do that? Yes. It's, I was kind of curious what the atmosphere would be, and I was curious what uh, I, I, I kind of wanted to meet the uh, the, the triumvirate of uh, of anti-vax doctors uh, because I knew Robert Kennedy, Dr. Jay Gordon, and uh, and Dr. Bob Sears were all going to be there, and I was curious if I could get a word straight from them and see what they were going to say to my face when charged with uh, so you're causing the anti-vax epidemic. What do you have to say about that? And of course they were they were about as awful as I expected them to be and two of Bob Sears and Jay Gordon said straight to my face they were not anti-vax which is you know a complete line of crap they you know they, these are men who in their practice try to dissuade people from vaccinating and Bob Sears wrote the book that's called the vaccine book and, and tries to get parents to vaccinate on a on an altered schedule and of course to my face he said I tell parents who are who are uncomfortable about vaccinating that it's okay to vaccinate on a different schedule and this gets parent to vaccinate to vaccinate and I've seen what he writes on his blog and this is just you know a complete line of bunk so talking to Robert Kennedy who was there to promote his book he's just completely linking vaccines and the you know the horrible things in vaccines to autism and neurological disorders and it was going there and wearing I wore a shirt that said I love vaccines to this party uh, it was interesting to see the reactions and having people look at me like what's she doing here so it was it was quite the interesting reaction and you you know, some people on my blog weren't happy that I had even gone to the event, but having these people you know, say to my face that they weren't anti-vaccine and then say in the same sentence that vaccines cause neurological disorders was was quite frightening. It was it was it was a bizarre experience for me, and I, I don't think I'll be going to any more anti-vax events. <laughs> How much do you blame so. the media for the fact that the anti-vaxxer movement has really experienced quite exponential growth in the last many years? I, it's, I think it's a combination of, of the media and a combination of, uh, of people just, like I said, disseminating bad information online because people latched on to this idea years ago from this one study. And I mean, this study shouldn't have been published ever. It, Dr. Andrew Wakefield, well, now he's Mr. Andrew Wakefield as he's, been, as, as he's lost his medical license, published one study, didn't have a lot of children that were studied, that said that the MMR vaccine was linked linked to autism. And it was this one vaccine that he said was linked to autism. And he was at the time, I believe, trying to promote a vaccine that broke up uh, the MMR into three and MMRs for measles, mumps and rubella. He was trying to promote uh, breaking it up into three separate shots. So he wasn't even against vaccines. He was trying to promote another one. And he was also trying to sue the manufacturer of that. So he had a financial interest in it as well. Somehow the study got published. Eventually the Lancet dis, uh, um, discredited the study. They shouldn't have published it to start with. And somehow this one study should have never been published, didn't have very good science behind it. it it's, it's taken a life of its own. And Jenny McCarthy, who somehow went from Playboy Bunny, not that there's anything wrong with that whatsoever, went from Playboy Bunny to public health expert because she thought she saw a reaction in her son. And I, my heart goes out to Jenny because I'm sure that it must have been heartbreaking to see this. But at the same time, I really wish she would have looked into the science behind this and seen that she was latching on to something that just had no scientific veracity. And because of all the press time she got, 
a lot of parents chose not to vaccinate and parents saw their children get sick when they chose not to vaccinate after that. So I wonder how many cases of measles Jenny might be personally responsible for. Well, having said that, you and your blog have gained uh, a great deal of public attention and currency, <laughs> and I wonder not whether you think you're evening the scales a bit now. I, well, I certainly hope so. I mean, and it's not just me. I'm one of many, many scientists who have spoken out. It's just that I've, I've gotten a lot of attention, I believe, for my flagrant use of the word shit. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's part of it. But I'm, I'm one of a lot of scientists, and I'm very, very glad that attention is finally being thrown to the other side. So, I mean, it's me. As you said earlier, Dr. Joe Schwartz is going to be on. Uh, doctors like uh, Kevin Folta, uh, David Gorski, a lot of us are speaking out. And I think it's time that the scales swayed back in the other direction. Direction, because science really needs its moment. Uh, how much do you want the scales to go? And by that, I mean, should it be the law that you've got to get your kid vaccinated? It's, I don't know if it should be the law. And the only reason I say that, the only reason I say that is because there are children who are immunocompromised and cannot be vaccinated. There are some children for whom there is an allergy to components in the vaccine. So I wonder how hard it would be for them to get an exemption if there was a law. I don't think you should throw someone in jail if they can't be vaccinated. I, I just don't know if we made it a law, if it would be difficult. But I think for somebody to enter public school, they should have to be vaccinated. I think that would be a good way to go about it. If you choose to kind of step out of society, and homeschool or whatnot, that, you know, there should be a way to do an exemption on that. But if you want to enter society, I think vaccination should absolutely be, be a mandatory thing because it keeps everyone around you safe. Because if there's someone who is immunocompromised or who can't get a vaccine, by vaccinating, you keep them safe because you won't be a disease vector. So I think that we need to raise awareness about how, how safe vaccines are and how much they can do for the public good as a whole. So it's like I said, making it a law um, might be a bit much because of the people who can't vaccinate. I'm not sure how many hoops they would have to jump through, but I, I think we need to push these a little bit harder and it's going to help out everyone as a whole. Yvette Dontremont, the science babe. Good of you to join us on TVO tonight. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.